I fixed it and then up and running. Mm-hmm. So I shared my first post there and and then I shared it on my IG as well as a post, as a feed post. Mm. The comments were so overwhelming and everything was so good. Like what people were saying was so encouraging. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, now I can do this thing on a regular basis, on a consistent basis. Mm. So I would always take some time off school because my classes were done on Friday at 11 a.m. So every Friday I'd go back home and make a chance to create content and put it online. So I'd plan myself with Friday and Saturday is time for my content and then Sunday is family time, friends, Mm. resting, etc, etc. Uh, Back then I really didn't have any much expectations on what I was doing. I was just doing it for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And then now come 2020, uh, when now the pandemic hit, uh, we were now all learning from home. So now the time was so much. Um, I got a chance to uh, build my page more, create more. So on a random on a random day at like 6 p.m., I'm checking my email and then I see an email from um, an agency. They're like, hi, I uh, would like to work with you um, to promote our, a big client, to promote our brand. I was like, wait a minute, is this meant for me? <laughs> so actually I went and checked if that agency is real because I never heard of it. Okay. Yeah. So I checked, I'm like, okay, it's real. Let me Google this person. Maybe it's a scam. So yeah. I Google the name and I'm like, okay, yeah, it's true. So I respond and then uh, they get back to me and they're like, okay, so we're going to discuss these rates. First of all, the amount of money that I was hearing was a bit wild for me because I was like, I didn't know that this platform, social media, can make you earn a living from it. At this so, point in time, did you even have a rate card? Uh, did I? Well, my rate card was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was a joke because I never ever thought someone would reach out to me because I always live, even I think up to now, I always live in this bubble where I'm like, I don't know that people are watching, but I know they're watching. I don't know if you get me. Yeah. Yeah. So if someone would mention that they know what I'm doing, or if someone would come and tell me, I saw this on your story on your on your reel. I'm mm. like, wait a minute, people actually watch. Mm. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, of course, no one is seeing besides my friends who are always supporting me. Mm-hmm. So I get back to them, and then now the work starts, and it was when now I started building a lot of confidence in myself and having more hope and building discipline and more like my passion just became it blossomed into something different it was Mm. so beautiful and now after that I started working now on my own brand even more and more so I'd also collaborate with other creators in Mm. the space and get to see how they're working and also do the same uh, come and create magic together which was beautiful so I feel like that starting point where someone showed that they believe in me, someone that I don't know completely, um, who was willing to pay me money uh, to invest in me, made me feel really good about myself and made me push my myself to yeah to work harder and build my brand. And which, here you are now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, Kurt, in your journey from 2018, that's uh-huh. why I started, yeah? Yes. From 2018, is there any point that you felt like, I'm out, I, I, you doubted yourself? You have said that sometimes and yeah, it was a bit, but is there any point you're like, listen, I'm about to quit uh, being a home cook and let me look for a marketing job because that's what I studied. Oh my, a lot. Even I think recently it's happened probably like four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do get those moments where I'm like, I'm better, I'm done, or this is not making sense. Or sometimes I just get discouraged. Mm. And so what I'm trying to learn is um, that it's okay to take a break. Yeah, it's okay to go out of the internet and just relax and recollect and re-energize and re-strategize to come back stronger. Mm. Uh, But I also need to know that it's okay for me. It's not okay for me to stop. Okay. Exactly. Yes. So, so no stopping, but no yes, stopping, rest. But I need to take a break. Yeah. Mm. So in scenarios where I feel like I'm losing it or I need to quit, I just decide to take a break for at least two weeks, and then I have to come back because that's my bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not planning on disappearing for two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So whenever I have such moments, I talk to uh, friends who are in the same space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be. Uh, way of getting inspiration and motivation Mm -hmm. um also i'm so grateful that i have family that supports what i do Mm. yeah so i'd also talk to my family 
and go out more. I feel like for me, whenever I'm out, it's when I get inspired. Mm. Yeah, besides staying in one spot the whole time, like staying mm. home would make me go crazy. crazy. I was going to ask yeah. you about the family part because I feel like um, telling your parents, I want to become a cook. Mm-hmm. What was that like coming from marketing? When I school for four years, <laughs> oh, <laughs> for you to come and cook for us on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that concept is still very new to them. You know, mm-hmm. um, I don't even think up to now they understand what it's about mm-hmm. or what I'm doing. But so what happened? I finished school in December, mm-hmm. and uh, my dad was like, "Okay, I think now you need to start looking for a job." That was in January. Mm-hmm. So I told him. Um, let me just work on my stuff and I see how things go. If they go, uh, what is that word people are using right now? Mrama. Oh my God. Mrama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. If they go bad for me, I'm gonna um, look for a job. Mm. So I told him, um, give me till April. Mm-hmm. So he was like, ah, yeah, it's fine because I've seen what you've done the previous years and you've been handling stuff for yourself quite well. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, we believe in you. So April comes and he's not asking me, no one's asking me if, when I'm looking for a job. So I feel like at this point now, they believe that this can be a different source of income. Mm. Yeah, and I'm just trying to explain to them and teach them what it's about every single day because I do know that maybe they may never come to the full understanding of what, of what content creation is or mm. how you can make money from just uh, posting on the internet. Yeah. But... Um, as long as I have the support, I feel like that's what I need to keep me. Mm, I think it's very, it's yeah. a very interesting, um, it's a very interesting direction because this is not a restaurant. Exactly. Neither is it. You know, it's literally food on the internet, beginning and the end of it. So it's a very interesting thing. And for you to have, you have over a hundred, you know, recipes mm. on your Instagram, on your blog. Are these original recipes or remastered? How do you find your recipes? Because I don't also think I don't think you've repeated any. You literally haven't repeated any. I'm very <laughs> right to say you haven't repeated any. Wow, how so, do you know that? <laughs> well, I did my research. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. I've not repeated any. Um, so for my recipes, um, some are family recipes that have been passed down from I'd learned from my mom or from my auntie who's a chef mm. well she retired but she was a very good cook so I'd mm-hmm. get to learn and I'd use that as well some of them also YouTube inspired where I'd see how people are doing things and then I'd just try not to make it my own way mm. and then some also are based on I can just look open the fridge and see that this is what I have I need to make something work out of it mm. so I'd build a recipe from that from that yeah. and in your time being a home cook and of course let's look at the cooking part a bit um, have you ever or even just let's mash it up together have you ever taken any other classes or skills to get to where you are apart from of course your degree um, yes, so I've been doing, I'm actually currently doing a class yeah, on the internet on mm-hmm. social media marketing mm-hmm. and digital marketing. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. The rest is not relevant to what I'm doing on the internet. The rest is just on my additional knowledge in case I want to look for a job later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what inspires your content? Because I feel like it has a very, it has a very specific voice. Mm-hmm. Your 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 page has a very because you know you can go to like five food creators, but yours has a very specific voice. So what's let, let me ask two part. One, what's the inspiration, and two, what's your process when you're putting it out there? Okay, uh huh. So my inspiration is um, a cook called the Golden Balance. The Golden Balance. Yeah. So he has a splendid job, and I like how he brings out his creations and how he makes everything work despite what she's using mm. yeah he could use the most simplest ingredients and make it into a meal that is very beautiful and very five star i'm like wow this is beautiful so besides him i follow a couple of other creators who i'm also very inspired by their work mm. and i get to build my own inspiration from that as well mm-hmm. uh, my process is usually um, crazy, sometimes smooth, sometimes crazy. Um, I'd give an example of yesterday's process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so I was baking a cake. Um, to note that I'm not uh, an avid baker. I mm-hmm. bake maybe once in three months. 
mm-hmm. or maybe even once a year. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was baking a cake because I got a comment from one of my followers saying, mm-hmm. um, give us something sweet on the page. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, let's bake a cake. So yesterday I started baking at what time? At about 2 p.m., 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. So mid um, my process, I was like, oh damn, I'm missing one ingredient. So I have to drive to the supermarket. Come back. <laughs> so I went and then I came back. So I continued the process. And now I'm also shoot- shooting on my phone and I'm using natural light. So, and it was a bit gloomy. So the mm. light was just shaky. So by that time, it was about 3.45, 4. And then now uh, I'm putting the cake into the oven at 4.30. I'm like, I'm very, um, I'm in trouble because by the time the cake is ready, it's going to be 5.30. And then it needs to cool for like an hour. It's going to be 6.30. Yeah. And my light is gone. So I was like, you know what? What I'll do, I'll shoot it in two days. Uh. So I baked the cake. Um, when it came out of the oven, it just chilled. And then today morning, mm-hmm. I woke up. And then I checked my fridge. I'm like, oh, shit. I don't have... Uh, frosting ingredients. Now so here you are running to the supermarket. Back to the supermarket again. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> how disorganized can one person be? Yeah. You're so organized, mm. you know? Yeah, so I'm back to the supermarket, I get the ingredients, and then I finish up the shoot, and I'm like, okay, so uh, how fast do I need to edit this? So I look at my posting schedule, and I'm like, today I'm safe, I don't need to post today, I can post it tomorrow. So mm. that's what the process is like, on a crazy day. Mm. Some days are very smooth, I can just wake up, uh, do my business, and then start shooting. I usually try shoot from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. so that that can be my last meal of the day uh. yeah so I'd shoot from 2 to 5 and then once I'm done I'd edit it in two hours or an hour and put it up immediately I don't like holding content so you do the whole process by yourself everything by myself you don't have a team what you put out for us is purely you. Because <laughs> I would I'm assume <laughs> I would assume you have a whole team. Oh, no. I really, really would. It's a one man show. Yeah? Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, let's talk partnerships. Um, I have seen you've partnered with a couple of brands out there. Mm-hmm. And I would think that, you know, if you're, let's say, a lifestyle influencer or content creator, it would be easier for you to partner with a lot of brands because you fit their niche a lot but when it comes to your specific you know um criteria i feel like it might be a bit hard so have you ever had to say no to some partnerships purely because they don't match with um what you do um funny enough i've not been approached by anything that is out of line with my work okay yeah but i have said no to things that i don't value myself yeah, mm. in terms of this is not something that I can swear by, or this is a product that I would not use on my own. Mm-hmm. So I would politely decline that partnership. I like this about you said politely. <laughs> yes, I have to because it's business. After the biggest low, I think, was probably, uh, uh, I think my biggest low was when uh, one of my contracts ended mm-hmm. with a big client. And I was so comfortable at that point of time um, to having them as as my client, and I was so attached. Uh. Yeah, I felt like I put my all into it, and I was attached to them. And that was a couple of years back. I was like, okay, now that the contract is done, like, what do I do? <laughs> like, what next? Yeah, what next? Like, can I take any other? A client and work with them and still feel whole as these guys did because um. I loved how the process was, how they were working. Everything was so in order and it was beautiful. And then now when it came to an end, it was a bit... Uh, you felt some type yeah, of way. Yeah, it was a bit... Yeah, it put me somewhere off. Uh. Uh, for my biggest high, I feel like it has been this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I dedicated this year, the first half of this year, to building my page with my content um on a consistent basis. And it's showing, just yeah. saying. <laughs> so this year, my biggest high was getting a chance to grow my page mm-hmm. uh, in an authentic way and also build a relationship with my audience. I always make sure I respond to almost every comment just so that it feels like you're talking to a human, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You always look at like someone's comments and be like, they've not responded. But now the moment you start having a relationship with your audience, it builds... Um, a community yeah yeah because that's what i'm trying to get i will say it's actually showing yeah. your consistency i feel like i don't go i wouldn't go three days without seeing something from your account yeah and that's really really cool that bugs me by the way why like, if i have no post in three days actually you know how instagram shows um 
five days ago, six days ago, then yeah. now it shows, let's say, 17th April. Yeah. And once I see a date, I'm like, oh my, where am I? I need to get back at <laughs> <Yeah>. it. Because <laughs> sometimes time goes so fast and I don't realize the time passing mm. by and I'm like, maybe I need to rest. But okay, if I rest, life needs to move on. So yeah, yeah it gets... Some type yeah. of way, but I think your consistency is very neat. I, it's it's crazy. Again, okay. I don't miss your content. And in the time you've been in this career, how, what like what lessons have you learned? Okay, um, I've learned to trust the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, nothing comes easy. Well, you can have overnight success, mm-hmm. and you can also have success that has been built from a point where you're b- growing slowly and slowly. So mm-hmm. that teaches you to trust the process. Uh, that's the biggest take I've gotten from it. I've also learned how to make friends uh, and go out of my comfort zone with mm-hmm. people that I would have never met at first year. Yeah. So it's improved my networking skills. Usually I'm someone who's very comfortable with the people that I know. Mm-hmm. Or if I meet you in a space where, let's say, we meet in school, yeah, that's it. I'm not one who'd go out of my way and make friends like yeah. like that. Yeah. So this has taught me to network with people, build connections that are meaningful. And yeah, pretty much. Have you have you made any friends from your content creation? Not someone you knew from like school or yes, other avenues. I have. You yeah, have. Yeah, I have That's made so two lovely. good close friends, which is nice. It's nice to have a friend in this space. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Aside from the amazing food we see on your page, uh-huh. um, what else would you say you do? Is that like your all? Is that everything you're doing? Ama, there is more to David Kenyanjui. Oh, there's more. Yeah, there's more, which I don't know when I should share it on my page. I always feel like sharing it, but I'm like, maybe people just want to see food, you know? Well, <laughs> yeah, so okay. On the side, I'm a photographer, so I do client photography for restaurants okay yeah i do that as well uh i'm a marketing strategist and i'm also now i just started pursuing accounting which Uh is family business so that's what i'm doing as well Uh yeah so i'm a little bit everywhere so the times when i'm quite on social media it's not that i'm doing it on purpose it's because i'm handling other things Mm, as well another thing needs your attention as much yeah and then i also love going to the gym uh which yeah. is a way just to keep up with my mental health and keep me in check and mm. make me feel good about and boost those endorphins, you know? Yeah. yeah. I was going to actually ask you that because it's a mental health awareness <laughs> English. Mental yeah. health awareness month. Yes. And um, I mean, as you've mentioned, you're literally doing one billion things at once. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're shooting 2 p.m. to God knows what time. So what other things do you do to ensure that you're keeping your mental health at bay? Apart from the gym. You've told us the gym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I read books. I love reading books. Ah. Yeah. So I feel like when I'm ever, whenever I'm reading a book, I'm in a completely different world, and the world is shut off. Uh, so I'm in my own, space. my own, yeah, my own space, my own bubble. You know. Mm. Yeah. I'd also do things like go on hikes and go on walks, and hang out with family and just people who make you feel like sunshine. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that would also be a good way for me to keep up with uh, my mental health. Mm. Yeah. Have you faced, okay, thank you. <laughs> Have you faced any challenges in your field? Um, considering you're young, mm-hmm. you're young, and being young, getting that respect from especially your industry, which is very cutthroat, um, mm. would, I would see it as a challenge. Have you faced any challenges in your time as, you know, your career? Yes, I've faced, um, I've felt um, disrespected a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I felt uh, undervalued. Um, yeah, with times where I have to chase for my payments. Uh, uh, yeah, with times where um, I'd feel like my my work has been uh, what is it called? My work, my um, international uh, intellectual property is mm. not being respected. Where mm-hmm. um, someone would misuse my work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so those are the challenges that I end up facing on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Um, but the good thing with time, I learn how to deal with them. Okay. Yeah, and I don't take them as challenges anymore. No, I take them as a learning opportunity because okay. I know how to deal with certain people now. Um, yeah, I'm getting a chance to. If I see someone is problematic from the start, that's a red flag. You know. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> Do move your sights. Yeah. yeah. You can always see red flags at mm. the beginning. So, yeah. yeah. Have you, give us a few tips of how you deal with these people because I think it's in every industry at this point in time mm-hmm. where you're probably undervalued or not respected in one way or the other. How do you deal with these people? Um, so earlier on, I never knew how to. I just used to complain to my friends. So you <laughs> too. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I just used to complain every time. I'm like, this guy is but but now um, of recent, the way I would deal with it is I'd be very stern about it, mm-hmm. and I'd make it clear from the get-go that these are the terms that I work with and these are the terms that you're going to work with um, and we'd all come to an agreement. So if I spot any um, misunderstanding or any delay or any, or, or how would I explain it, or any way that you're not living up to the terms or mm. you're going the other direction, um, I would just communicate. Um, okay. That's the most I can do, really. Yeah, yeah especially I just, when you're under contract. Exactly. Mm. I could just communicate and let you know that this is what you're doing and I want you to do this, etc., etc. Okay. Most times it's worked because, I mean, we're all human yeah. and sometimes people could be busy, they forget, or oh, so on and so on. Yeah. So you also need to be understanding and not be like, ah, they're doing me dirty like this. You, yeah. know? you also need to be understanding that they're human and maybe they have a lot on their plate. Yeah. Yeah, so... You also need to be understanding and have a positive attitude. Don't be too mad about it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Would you say you're passionate about what you're doing? So much. Yeah. I'm obsessed with my art. You are. I'm obsessed with my art. Yeah. So I think passion is the key thing that you need if you're for anyone if you're listening to this and you're a content creator or an artist or in the field where in the creative space i feel like passion is the most important thing because Mm. passion drives results yeah yeah so you need to be passionate for you to wake up every morning and decide that i'm going to do this every day um no matter the circumstance or i'll try and do it either way you know yeah yeah so passion is my first um my first, uh, what is it called, value, mm-hmm. and then now comes things like consistency, discipline, yeah. and so on and so on. So okay. I think I'm passionate. Um, we're heading to a time. If this financial bill does pass, uh-huh. content creators are about to be taxed 15 percent. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh-huh. it's it's quite it's been a conversation in you know around um, how it's very unfair. I've seen very many angles of this story. What's David Kenyadri's angle about this? You know what? Like when I saw that, I was really hoping that that bill is not passed. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like it, it's now going to be harder for creators to make a living out of it because fifteen percent is a lot of money. It is. Yeah. Per se, being paid a hundred thousand, they're taking fifteen thousand out of it, and you're left with that small amount. So, um, it might be very hard for creators to build a solid income from it and i think what we should do as creators is find a way to make this bill not be passed mm-hmm. yeah for me i was like you know what if things get half uh, rough for me i'm gonna look for a job that's the next thing i was gonna Man. ask you i'm gonna be like hmm I'm are like, we doing this forever i'm like i'm gonna look for a job because this this the way the government is going they can even wake up and say one day 30 percent and you're yeah. Left, yeah, let's say you're making like what from one uh, campaign, let's say you're getting what 20,000 shillings, uh-huh. and they tax that. What are you left with considering you spent money? Because content creation is not cheap, again. yeah, it's a very expensive career. What are some of the what are some of the things that because I know okay, of course, you're a chef, so you have ingredients. What are some mm-hmm. of the things you spend money on when you're creating content? Funny enough, um. I wouldn't have all the ingredients. I'd have the normal stuff, yeah. spices, um, vegetables, I'd have those. But if it's something specific, let's say I need cream, I need um, a substitute vinegar, I need uh, marination ingredients, I'll need to spend money on that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also constantly buying uh, utensils and cookware. Yeah. Yeah, and then also... And a grill. A, and a grill, <laughs> of course. Uh, and also as a content creator, I feel like you also need to keep looking good all the time because of course. you can be out in public and you don't want to be looking the way you want, you know? <laughs> yeah, so you also need to invest in yourself, in your clothes, yeah. uh, in your looks. You need to keep looking sharp all the time. So it gets expensive. And then now there are always things like events happening. And you, you have, have to, to buy, be present for it. Exactly. And, and then I say they give outfit. you themes. You all dress Man. according to theme every time. Hey, so you look at that budget, you're seeing that in an event you're going to spend about 10,000 shillings. And you're like, eh, okay, let me just stay home. <laughs> because sometimes you'd find you're going for that and you're not being paid. So, uh, yeah, so it's the 10K coming out of your pocket for you just to go. If you look at it on the positive side of it, you're going to network and yeah. build connections and meet other creators. Mm. But now if you're looking at it um, financially, <laughs> if you're being uh, smart with this government, I feel like 
Mm. There's just some things you can't um, just keep throwing your money out for. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think a bit still on that. Mm -hmm. Is this something you're pursuing forever? Is this the plan? Yeah, the plan is to do it forever. Yeah. yeah to build my brand as much as I can. Okay. Yeah. So I decided to take this year to do that and build a name for myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to be in places where I don't have to introduce myself. Okay. You know? That's the dream. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to build something of. Uh, I want to build a brand that is going to help people, mm. uh, inspire people, and motivate people. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you feel like currently, as is, you're already doing that? Yes, I feel like I am. Mm -hmm. I just want to reach a larger audience as well. Okay. I do appreciate everyone who gets inspired and motivated, because I also do get inspired with people as yeah. well. Yeah? So I do know how good it feels when someone inspires you and you see them keep going because you're like, yo, you're my, you're my hope. Like, I'm looking up to you, you know? Yay. Yeah. So I'd want to be in a position where I've, I'm helping people off my content. Okay. Yeah. Have Not just helping um, a business make money, but helping changing the way people are doing things in a positive way. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What's, have you ever had, like, what's your biggest fun moment? Mm. Your biggest, you know, comment moment or something. Just something that someone who is not your friend, is not your family, mm -hmm. told you and you're like, wow, okay. Oh, why don't I remember this? <laughs> uh, I think we'll revisit this. I we'll need to remember. I can't remember. You need remember. to think about it for yeah, a second? Yeah, I can't remember. Um, okay. Yeah. Moving forward, what are we, what are we expecting from you? Um, a lot of barbecue content. Of course. Yeah. We have a grill. <laughs> and hopefully a restaurant based on that um, ah. in God's time. All in good good and God's time. Yeah. Okay. That's what we should be expecting. Exactly. What about photography? What are we looking at at the photography side? Are um, we pursuing that a bit more? So actually the photography, um, I felt like my passion went... I, Sniffles, huh? Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I felt like my photography interest um, has just been declining at a fast rate, but sometimes I do pick up and feel like I'm back there again, but I don't feel whole when uh. I do it. Um, it doesn't give me so much fulfillment as this other side does give me. Uh. So I'd use photography. I'm still good at it and I enjoy doing it, but not to the extent where I'd want to put in a lot of time into it. Okay. So for now I do photography um, for commercial purposes and just to, you know, to increase money in my wallet. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like moving forward, um, of course looking at the taxation issue, I'll be mm. back at that, um, looking at the taxation issue and just basically cost of living in this country, do you feel like you're going to ever have to take up like another job to substitute um, your content creation? Um, yes, most likely, um, because I feel like the content creation space in Kenya is growing, but it's not grown to the extent where um, you could comfortably live off mm. of it, yeah? yeah? Yeah. I mean, there are people who are doing it, but not everyone can get an opportunity to live comfortably off it, because mm. you could get money, a lot of money in this month, and then you're dry for the next four months you know okay. so i think you just need that safety so i probably will get something that i can have a consistent income of it doesn't have to be a nine to five mm. but it has to be an, um, a stream of income where i'm getting money on a monthly basis okay. on a regular basis we'll bring ourselves on the nine to five exactly we shall not be slaves <laughs> we shall not be slaves to the nine to five okay that it's been a whole interview um Ta takeda copper says watching live from Mombasa today thank you takeda i hope you've gotten a few snippets here and there and i hope that it um, inspires you to enter the kitchen we have emmanuel wanda thank you so much for listening Dio aboka says taking a break is always a solution when things are not working out in business good conversation mary Lynn and the team thank you so much we appreciate your comment thank you for listening in um takeda again says great job <laughs> you've really inspired takeda oh hi really Takeda, really how Takeda. are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, we're at the end of our interview. Um, so feel free, give us words of wisdom. <laughs> how soon? Wisdom. It's over already? It so soon? <laughs> uh -huh. um, I'm going to keep it short and, and sweet, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'll give what I, I go by. Um, mm -hmm. I go by um, live a little, yeah? So... You need to be in the moment. Um, don't take life too seriously. 
and enjoy things as they come because um, you're never gonna be this young again mm. yeah, to experience what you're experiencing now. So be in the moment more and just take it once, one breath at a time. Yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. Okay. Yeah, and to anyone who's um, in the same space as me as a food content creator or just or a aspiring. content creator or aspiring, I mean, pick up that phone right now and start filming. Yeah, you need to post immediately. Yeah, you need to post immediately <laughs> because tomorrow never comes. Yeah. yeah, you need to post immediately. And don't be too shy. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen, you know, besides... Mm. You oh, not, yes, yes, yeah, besides, like, what's the best that could happen? Exactly. What's the best that could happen? Look at it from that side, actually. Yeah. Exactly. You could be the biggest content creator in your field in the next couple of months, you know? So I feel like, um, I realize I use the word feel like a lot. I'm a feeler, <laughs> more than a thinker. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah I'm a feeler. I'm more in touch with my emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but anyway, I feel like... Um, you need to put yourself out there as much as you can if you're trying to be a content creator because that's the only way you build opportunities, especially in this um, field. It's more about who you know uh, and what can you do for person X and yeah. person Y and why they should work with you or why you should work with them. Yeah. So put yourself out there, uh, don't give up, be consistent and original and I think you're going to be very good. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. And where, where are we finding your content? I know your content. <laughs> exactly. A couple of guys might know your content, but where are we getting your content from? Um, so you can find my um, content on Instagram at David Kinyanjui. There are two eyes at the end. Uh, you can find me on my website, davidkinyanjui.com, and TikTok, David Kinyanjui. Okay. Um, thank you so much for coming in. I really, really do appreciate. Um, it's amazing to have young minds and people who, I won't say starting out per se, but just chasing what you're passionate about. I think that's the aim of me. Um, if you have seen the other guests that I've had, I've always chosen people who are chasing something different, you know, mm. in, the, in the entrepreneurship field. Um, and I think we can do it. We really have the capability and the energy and the passion that drives us to be able to be, can I say leaders in our field? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that's the direction you're headed. I'm really excited to see what's um, forth for you. I, of course, will be supporting you all the way. And so will people who've watched and listened mm -hmm. um, to this interview. Thank you for coming. Um, also, all my guests, please, let's all be like David Kinyanju. He brought me cake. <laughs> exactly. Let's all be like David Kinyanju. So the cake I was talking about in this story, she got a slice of it. <laughs> yes, I very much, and I'm very grateful. So all my guests, please, let, let's try this. I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Um, mm -hmm. from www.baseradio.co.ke or you've watched on Facebook Live. We really, really do appreciate you. That has been our interview. I'll try to steal him for part two. Worry not. I know, I understand this has been shorter than my other interviews, but there are a few technical difficulties we couldn't do anything about. But uh, yeah, I'll try to steal him for part two one time and uh, we can be able to catch up on the conversation. I really appreciate you guys listening and either or watching, whichever one. Um, I'll see you guys next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 2 to 4 p.m. The Entrepreneur Spot with me, Marilyn Wanjuko. We're chopping it up. We're learning what's happening in the business world. I'm giving guys tips and tricks. I told you guys, Google jobs near me and we're getting employed, guys. We're getting the bag. I'll see you guys next week. It's been lovely, lovely um, sharing this space with you. Be Stay tuned. There is the Hangout 4 to 7 p.m. If you're like me and you don't have the energy to always know what's going on with celebrities, for a good clean three hours, you're going to learn everything that's happened in the celebrity and the gossip world. So stay tuned for that 4 to 7 p.m. But for me, Marilyn, I'm going to see you guys next week.